Hi! Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jimmy. I make videos every week to add value to you as I do to myself. I've got a 3 month old son now who's growing so quick that I cannot even cope up with him. He's already outgrown his 0 to 3 month size clothes. He's outgrown some of his toys and some other things that was given to him. So I'm in the process of rearranging everything and sorting out and putting some of his clothes away in storage. And that's when I realized I've bought quite a lot of things in preparation for his arrival while I was pregnant. Now, most of these things are essential. Some of them are good because they are a necessity. Some of them are really, really good. These are my favorite items that I cannot do without. So I wanted to share some of these items with you today. They're all in random order and I will add links to all of these things in the description box down below. So if you wanted more information, click on the description box. I'm not gonna talk about any of the specifications whatsoever. You'll be able to find all of those things in the links below. The first one is a tote and tumble mat that I'm sitting on at the moment. I cannot tell you how much I love this mat. I originally had a carpet down here on this floor. I like that carpet a lot, however the carpet wasn't suitable for a baby because no matter how much you vacuum a carpet, it's not going to be 100% dust free and I didn't want any carpet burns whatsoever so I was very reluctant to put him down on the carpet. I was looking for a child friendly mat and all of the children's mats, like a play mat sort of a thing, all of them were very childish and it didn't look nice to put in a living room. So I was a bit reluctant to buy all of those things also. When I was doing my research I came across the Tarte and Tumble website and I came across this mat here. This is a two-way mat. It's got two designs on both sides and it's a sealed memory foam. So it kind of holds its shape and impression. Even if you were to sit down you were to put something heavy on it, it looks as if it's sinking. However, it will bounce back up within a couple of minutes or maybe an hour or two. You can use this as a yoga mat, as an exercise mat and most importantly it is a child's play mat. So even if you know he were to hit his leg or um, knock himself on this mat, it's not gonna hurt him at all. Levi is now growing and he has very strong legs so he seems to be kicking about quite a lot and there are multiple times where he's kicked himself on the mat and it hasn't hurt him at all and he loves rolling about, he loves lying flat on this mat. Every morning we pick him up and we put him down on this mat so that he's free to move around, free to explore and turn. This mat is also waterproof so you can wipe any stains or anything that you've dropped on it and it comes right off. I've even managed to remove marker pen marks from this mat with a wet wipe. We use this to exercise on. We've not been exercising as much as we would like. However, whenever we do it once in a blue moon, we use this mat as an exercise mat and it's actually much better than the previous exercise mat that we had. And it's been especially gentle on my knees and my bum every time I kneel or sit down with Levi and play with him. Had I not had this mat, I wouldn't have sat on the floor as often as I have in the last three months. If and when this mat were to wear off, I will be sure to buy another one immediately. The next item is a nappy bin. If you have babies, you will know that you need to empty the bin as frequently as possible, maybe even every day. Some people would even go to the extent of throwing their nappy, uh, throwing the dirty nappies away with each change. I live on the first floor flat. Emptying my bin every day is not practical. Leave alone emptying it after every change. I don't want the smell to linger in the house, so I was really looking for an nappy bin that would contain the smell and that would allow me to, you know, not empty my bin every day essentially. I was originally going to buy the Tommy Tippy Twist and Click because that seemed like it was the most practical one to do the job that I wanted it to do, you know, to contain the smell and to contain a few nappies that I could keep it for a couple of days before I threw it out. But when I received this bin, I wasn't too happy with the quality, it's all plastic and I wasn't even happy with the filter that you need to buy for it. You probably would run out of one roll of filter within two or three weeks and then you would be buying a lot more plastic to use that bin. So I returned that and I came across another bin called the Ubi bin. Now this one is a lot more famous in the US than it is in the UK. Not many people use it here or I've not heard many people talk about this bin at all. This bin is 
made out of stainless steel. It contains a smell because of its design. It's got a rubber seal around the lid itself. So when you have it shut, the smell stays in and it doesn't come out. Even when you open it to put in a dirty nappy, you hardly get any smell. Unless you leave it open for a good couple of minutes or maybe even half an hour, that's the only time you ever smell the dirty nappies. Otherwise, it is self-contained within that. Because it's stainless steel, you just need to wipe it away with a damp cloth as and when you need to. And also, um, this one would take a 40 liter regular bin bag, so you don't need to buy special liners or filters for it at all. Just use a regular bin bag that you would for your kitchen bin. That's what we do. We buy a 40 liter bin bag for our kitchen bin and that's the exact same thing that we use for the nappy bin also. Another thing about the Ubi bin is that it's much slimmer and taller, so it works works out really well when you put it on the floor. You don't have to bend down too much when you want to use it, when you want to empty it and put in another bin bag or even put in dirty nappies in there. With the Tommy Tippy Twist and Click, it was too short also. I couldn't put it on the floor. I had to put it on the table and I didn't want to put a bin bag on the changing table to take up the place. It was much more expensive than what I wanted to pay for a bin. However, had I bought the Tommy Tippy Twist and Click, it would have added up to be a lot more expensive than this because of the filter that I would have had to buy for it. Car seats are extremely important when you have a newborn baby. In the UK, you're not allowed to take your baby back home without a car seat. So when we were researching for a car seat, the main thing that Lakshman and I wanted was one that would twist 360 degrees in the ISO base itself. So it's easy when you want to remove the car seat from the car and put it back in. You can turn it around to face you when you're going to pick it up and then when you're going to put it back in again, you can put it back in while um, the car seat is facing you, while the baby is facing you and then twist it around to face the back so that that's the safest way for you to drive. I am fully aware that a 360 degree rotation car seat is a bit of a luxury but sometimes it becomes an essential itself. When you park in a tight spot, it's so difficult difficult to actually remove the car seats and put it back in but when you can rotate this it's so much more easier to do it. I don't know what it is but I think it's something to do with the angle when you can rotate the car seat facing you it's easier to lift it off and put it back on as opposed to when it's rear facing. Another thing I found about the rotating car seat is that it's very helpful when my baby is fussing and I need to comfort him. We would always park the car at a safe place and then I would rotate the car seat to face me, comfort him and play with him a little bit and he knows that I am there, he's reassured that I'm sitting right next to him. Once he's okay after a couple of minutes, we turn it back to face the rear facing and then we drive off. In addition to all of its extra safety measures that this car seat has, the Cybex Cloud C is the only car seat that can recline also. What we found is if Levi falls asleep while we are traveling, which is very rare, but when he does and we reach our destination, we remove the car seat from the car, we leave him in and we recline it. Babies cannot be sat in a car seat for more than two hours because it kind of compresses their lungs and they cannot breathe fully. So we recline it so that he can continue with his sleep but he's able to breathe properly also. More than the recliner, it was actually the 360 degree rotation that sold it to me. It's not the lightest car seat at all, I'm not going to sell that to you. It's really heavy, I cannot carry that car seat along with Levi in it. So if I were to go out with him on my own, I would put the car seat in the car first, carry Levi and then put him in and then carry him out. I can't do both. But it's really good for the rest of the features other than the weight. I've got two types of changing mats. One is a regular PVC changing mat that I got from Aldi. Another one is a foam changing mat that I got from Online for Baby. The PVC changing mat is always in my bedroom and the foam changing mat is a permanent changing mat on my changing station itself. Levi loves the foam changing mat. Every time I put him on there to get him dressed or even to change him, he loves kicking about. I don't know what it is with that memory foam. He somehow loves it and he knows it. He knows that that is memory foam and he knows that this mat is memory foam as well. So every time he's on either one of those, he's always kicking about and it gives me peace of mind because I know that he's not hurting himself. He would never do that with that PVC changing mat. It was about 20 pounds and the regular PVC changing mat was only 3 dollars I think from Aldi. Um, it is definitely more expensive, however, it's long lasting and it's permanent. It's got like extra depth and extra ridges and everything on it. So it looks really nice and it's very comfortable. That's what is most important. The next item is a water mat for tummy time. You can do 
the tummy time with the baby is right from day one onwards. I bought one of those bolsters to use for Levi for his tummy time but we didn't get off on a good note with that at all. He was a bit too small when he was much younger and he didn't like it and that bolster was too big for him and somehow he just hated tummy time, he didn't like it and we didn't have much luck. I was trying to do whatever else I could do. Eventually, I saw someone speak about this water mat in a forum and I immediately ordered it from Amazon. When it came, the first day we didn't have much luck again. You need to fill the centre part with water and the border around it you have to fill with air. I thought um, he didn't like it because the water was a bit cold. Even when I had put my hand on it, I can feel a little bit of chill from there. So I wondered he probably didn't like it because of that. But from day two onwards, he somehow miraculously loved it. The minute I put him on that mat, he got into position and he enjoyed looking at all of those bits and pieces in the water and the colourful design. And also, the entire design of the mat makes it so much more easier for him to prop himself up correctly and he started enjoying tummy time ever since. Mine looks a little bit deflated now because I haven't used it in the last couple of days and I need to refill it before I can use it again. Now that Levi is bigger, I rotate it between the bolster and this tummy time mat but he prefers this mat over the bolster. I wish I had known about this product much earlier. We would have been able to tackle tummy time sooner. Next item that I want to talk about is a nail file. Every Tom, Dick and Donkey will tell you that you need a nail file. Baby's fingernails grows overnight and it's extremely sharp. It is so true. Levi's fingernails will grow overnight and I don't even know how that happens. Um, this nail file is an electric nail file that I saw someone talk about. It comes in several other attachments as well. The yellow one is the one that you would use for a newborn baby. The other colours are for adults for different purposes, also for children actually. When I first bought it, I was very very sceptical and reluctant to use it on Levi. I tried it on myself, hardly felt anything but it did the job perfectly well. It filed my nails without hurting me at all. The first time I used it on Levi, he was wide awake and he enjoyed it. He barely flinched. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a sound from that nail file or if it's a light that is on it that attracted him but he was really really quiet and I started using this on him ever since he was one week old. I use it on him like twice or maybe even three times a week sometimes because his fingernails grow overnight literally and it's so sharp he ends up scratching himself. Especially now that we've stopped swaddling him, his hands are free for him to scratch anytime he wants to. That's why mine looks so worn out. I need to order an Another one to replace this. You will be able to find the replacements online also. It comes in a box and it also comes with an instruction to tell you which attachment is for what. The next item I want to talk about is never far away from me. It is this monitor. It's a baby monitor from Mamas and Papas. It's the Angel Care brand. Levi is sleeping at the moment so I'm keeping an eye on him. Um, while I'm filming this. I got this from Mamas and Papas along with the other big ticket baby items that I bought. This one came in a very very good deal so we just bought this together with everything else. When we were first looking at monitors we were going to move house which was going to be across multiple floors so we really needed a monitor but when it came close to Levi's arrival we decided that we were not going to move, we were just going to stay in this house and then I thought if it was necessary to have one for a two bedroom house across one floor but we just went ahead and bought it anyway rather than delaying it. Now that I've used it for three months, I cannot tell you enough how much I love this and how much it has become a necessity. This is why it doesn't leave my sight. I'm able to do something else while Levi is sleeping in the room and I have a peace of mind that he is fine, especially now that he is able to kick around and move around in his cot. Um, I know that he's okay and he's not hurting himself, he's not distressed or anything like that. I didn't want to buy one of those baby cameras where you have an app on your phone. For one, it is Wi-Fi linked and it is quite dangerous at the moment where people can actually tap into your Wi-Fi and get access to your monitor. Um, and another thing is when you have it on your app on your phone, you can only see it when you click on your app physically and look at it. If you're using your phone for something else, you won't be able to see that app. So I had decided earlier on that I wanted a monitor with um, a separate monitor basically, not the ones that you have an app on your phone. That's why we decided to go ahead with this. This baby monitor has day and night vision. The night vision is so good. Um, the clarity is really really good. It's got audio, you can adjust the volume on it. Um, you can also adjust the setting, you can zoom in and zoom out from it. It also comes with one of those plates where you place it under the bed, under the mattress, so it tells you 
when there is movement or lack of movement maybe even I don't want to use it so I've not placed it under the mattress at all we've not linked it up together the monitor will also notify you when the temperature is above the limit that you have set so you will be warned to you know make adjustments when you need to the final item that I want to talk about is the snooze board 4 I was deciding between three different brands a maxi cozy chico next to me and snooze board 4 when I compared all three brands the snooze board 4 won hands down the height in this one is a perfect height for our bed it is quite airy it was so airy and so convenient and comfortable for Levi even during the hottest weeks the last couple of weeks you can also lift the top up as if you're lifting a Moses basket so we would sometimes Sometimes take it out from the bedroom and bring it out to the living room if we were sitting here or when my mother was here she wanted to spend time with him rather than carrying him all the time she would keep him in the cot um, in front of her in the living room the base has a rocker that you can rock rather than carrying the baby and you can also lift up one end of it usually the head end of the cot itself if you have a reflux baby we've used that a little bit with Levi because around about week three he had a little bit of a reflux issue and he couldn't sleep flat at all so we would raise that head end so that he could sleep well and he didn't have any issues the size was so good for a newborn baby and it fit perfectly well in our bedroom the tiny bit of regret that I have with this one is that Levi outgrew this bedside crib much sooner than I expected him to on that note I'm going to end this video today these are the items that I love and I would absolutely buy them again in a heartbeat if I needed to it's helped me so much in the first three months since having Levi in next week's video I'm going to talk about some of the baby items that I regret buying some of them are big ticket items some of them are basic essentials that I thought would be good but it wasn't good at all I will be talking about the snooze pod in the baby items that I regret buying also so be sure to subscribe so that you're notified when I upload a video next week I hope you found this one useful and I will see you again next week in a new video bye